Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're gonna to have a look at why Bitcoin is crashing and I'm not gonna repeat the same news that I personally have seen out there multiple times on different channels. This is something that I've come together, I've formulated between some news and the charts and I think this could be one of the reasons why Bitcoin is dropping. Now, some people might not like it. They don't like the idea of some of the traditional markets coming together with Bitcoin. I'm just looking at what I'm seeing and relaying that. That's pretty much what I'm doing here to try and get a better grasp of what's going on in the broader picture when it comes to our investing, in particular, cryptocurrencies. So if you like the sound of that, hit the subscribe button down below. Plenty more coming up on the channel. Like the video if you find some value from it and don't forget to hit that bell notification icon as well so that YouTube can notify you of these, these videos when they come up. Enough of me stumbling on my words, let's check out the first section of the video. First things first, it's the coin market cap, market caps for the cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin 900 billion, Ethereum has now dropped under 200 billion, looking like an okay time again to pick up some ETH. Polkadot Cardano back down the list. $35 and just a touch under a dollar for Cardano. Total market cap, 1.5 trillion. So I'm liking the look of a few of these coins at the moment. I don't know if this is the bottom, but it could look like some good times to be picking them up on the way down. So the first bit of news, which I see everywhere, is Jeanette Yellen says X, and then they relate it to the smashing of the Bitcoin price. Now I'm saying smashing, smashes Bitcoin. Personally, I don't really care what Jeanette Yellen has to say. Now, of course, who am I? Some guy on the internet, so if I don't care what she says, but it does have an effect on the market, maybe it does. But I say I don't care because I don't think many other people really care what she has to say. And that's just my position as an investor. I've got to weigh up what's going on out there and how much weight I have to give to each of these events. What Jeanette Yellen says about Bitcoin and not really understanding it, I. I think it doesn't really have that much of a difference on the market, to be honest. People will say uh, that she said something and then it smashed Bitcoin down 20%. I don't think that's the case. Moving on, what I do think the case is, is something more around what Meet Kevin has said. If you're not familiar with Meet Kevin because you're from the cryptocurrency space, he is a news commentator from the US, massive. Uh, does really good news. I love watching his stuff when it comes to understanding the Fed. And he says it in such a easy to understand way. And if you happen to go and check out this video, go and check out my comment, like it up. Anywho, basically what, what Kevin's saying in this video at the beginning of the video is around what the Fed is saying when it comes to inflation and increasing the interest rate. So they might be getting ahead of themselves to increase the interest rate at some point in the future, but the Fed says they don't want to do that because of the high, very high unemployment for the lower end of the market. Now this is all getting across to the Bitcoin price in a sec, just needs a little explanation. Basically, the, 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 the guys who don't get the jobs straight away as we come out of recessions, blacks, Hispanics, women. Now I'm not taking any size of politics here, left, right, I don't really give a stuff. Uh, that's why I'm in cryptocurrency, I'm more of the libertarian view, but besides that, we're looking at those groups don't get the jobs. All right, so they need to look after those uh, those minorities of the community to get them more work again, which means they're not going to put up the interest rates. However, if they keep printing money, then they look at increasing the inflation, and at least in the numbers, the inflation will increase year on year, even though the US Fed believes they need to have more inflation. So what does that mean? Basically, if you see numbers increasing, that there is inflation coming, then of course it's gonna cause mass hysteria or panic to some of the markets to say that, wow, inflation is coming, uh, what are we gonna do? We've maxed out everything, you know, we're buying everything up that we can, what's next? Um, and then that also leads into some other concerns with should we raise interest rates. So although we know from experience that when the money printer comes out, more money is printed and, the, uh, and basically more money goes into stocks and crypto and property, land prices, and then it increases, there comes a point where people start to think or investors, hedge funds, whoever's investing in the market start to believe that maybe we've done too much and interest rates will have to rise even if the Fed say it shouldn't rise because 
unemployment is still so extremely high. And the figure quoted here was around 25% of people in those lower uh, socioeconomics and those minorities, 25% of them are still unemployed. And the Fed saying they're not going to increase interest rates until they are at least getting their numbers back to more normal levels, which the rest of the country is at around 7%. All right. So if you've got a bit of a, a grasp on that, then that has then led to the US markets dipping. Now let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Now the NASDAQ dipped around the same time that Bitcoin dipped. However, the NASDAQ topped out earlier than Bitcoin. So this was a, about a few days earlier. And then on our top, when I say our, I'm talking about Bitcoin, we topped on the 22nd. And of course that was around the weekend and the NASDAQ's closed on the weekend, but the NASDAQ had a, fur, a, a higher, a lower swing high. You can see where I'm pointing at here at the top of the, the page, just up here. So Bitcoin continued to move up over the weekend. And then as Monday rolled in and the NASDAQ came into uh, early hours of trading before the, the day session, they had a nice spike down just here, 22nd of Feb, 4 p.m. Uh, we can take it right back and then we can still see that the market is trending down over this period while Bitcoin is also trending down. I'm going to scroll in a little bit so you can you can see where we're looking. Basically, we had a big spike down on the 23rd. The Nasdaq opens and then pushes down pretty strongly for the Nasdaq. It's no sort of loss that we see in cryptocurrency, but uh, we do see around a 1% drop on that bar there. This is just an hourly chart. Now that came after this dip on Bitcoin, but maybe crypto was expecting a drop in the Nasdaq pricing and the Nasdaq's continued to fall uh, over this period that Bitcoin has also continued to fall. And now Bitcoin has started to rise as the Nasdaq has started to rise. This is not an 100% uh, look at the market. So you can't just say, well, Nasdaq's doing this, Bitcoin's then definitely going to do this. However, I do see a lot of similarities with these two charts coming into uh, alignment together at times, but then at other times they are just not in sync. Look at this area just here. You can see that Bitcoin is bottoming out, whereas the NASDAQ is going on a bit of a rise. But we also see a little spike here and a spike on Bitcoin, slightly different times, sure. Then we see a drop into a low. So that's this is a, there's a weekend here. That's why the Bitcoin chart skips because the NASDAQ doesn't trade on the weekends. Then it drops over into the 1st of February, we get a low and then we both start to move out together. And this is where uh, Bitcoin and the NASDAQ become more in sync until we reach the NASDAQ top, which was also a minor top at the time for Bitcoin. But notice that we head into uh, a lower top for the NASDAQ. Bitcoin continues to rise and then a weekend forms. And over the weekend, Bitcoin has its top. Then we start to fall. So when we look at what are the reasons for Bitcoin falling, I think at times it has to do with the NASDAQ. What happens on the NASDAQ, we'll see on Bitcoin. Reason being is the NASDAQ is full of technology companies. And what is Bitcoin? What is digital assets? What are digital assets? They're all technology companies trying to solve some problem out there. Bitcoin is trying to solve the money problem, They're trying to solve store of value, uh, how we exchange with each other, just obviously keeping that store of value. So it's technology. Ethereum, same deal. The, everything else on this list is technology companies. And so when we look at the biggest technology indice in the world, the NASDAQ, then it's no wonder that we're going to see some similarities between the NASDAQ and Bitcoin. Now, for some people, this is probably nothing new. They've already known of this and they're just like, yep, it's just another day at the office. For a lot of new people, they may have not seen this before. So I'm no genius. I've looked at this before and I thought it's probably not a bad time to bring it up again, especially when we see the uncertainty with Bitcoin and people wondering what is going on. And a lot of commentators in the crypto space are kind of just repeating the same news article again and again and again, which is okay. You know, I do it as well. It's There are some beliefs that I think are the reasons for certain things happening. The Jeanette Yellen thing, I think is total garbage. I don't, I don't think anyone really cares. If you care what Jeanette Yellen says and you think it really does have an impact on the price of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, let us know in the comments down below. This is just how I'm interpreting it and how I play the market. You have to pick up your own game and how you want to play it. I'm not right. You're not wrong. 
It's just how we look at it and I'm just sharing my thoughts online. Taking a look at some of those news articles that I've mentioned. So this is from the New York Times and uh, what the bond market is telling us about the Biden economy. So just down here with a little piece that I've highlighted, we're at a place where the markets are starting to grapple with the question of whether there are trade-offs between more stimulus today and potentially higher rates and more inflation down the road. So that's said by Nathan Sheets, chief economist of PGIM fixed income and former official at the Treasury and Fed. So the main part I'm looking at here is trade-offs between more stimulus. So we know more money, yep, everything should go up or potentially higher rates and more inflation down the, ro down the road. So we get higher, higher uh, figures now but then we're going to get higher rates, which then obviously will hope, well, the, the Fed's hoping will push the prices down if we go out of control too much, right? But then they're starting to weigh these ideas up, which are happening in the future, bringing them into the present, the present pricing. And they think they've weighed it in enough for the future prices. And now it's time to start weighing them into the present. Essentially, this could lead to a further decline in the market. If people start factoring in inflation down the road, which I guess people have, we all know that there'll be inflation at some point and it's kind of happening already, but everything else is taking care of it. You know, prices continue to rise and everything else, we're getting more money in our pockets. Then investors might start to price that future in now. And we know that investors price the future in now, but how far into the future? So we're starting to really look down the line of five years. Usually we price in six to 12 months, maybe two years. And so now we're pricing in five years, inflation could be at that time. And that could start to swing things into a market correction, a deeper market correction for 2021, maybe 2022. If you guys have followed the channel, you know that I look at the land cycles and that's an 18.6 year, give or take, roughly between 17 and 23 years. And this will lead the stock market and the property market into a peak in around 2024 to 2026. It could drag on a little bit, but we'll know more to that point in time. The most important thing is, to note is that we will be going up into that period and we'll get a better idea into the mid 2020s as to where the top of the market will be. This is a very different view to a lot of people you hear in cryptocurrencies and precious metals, this whole space of ending the Fed, etc., where they believe the world economy has to crash this year as they thought it had to crash last year and in 2019 and 2018 you can see that everyone thinks the world should be crashing every single year especially when you're trying to remove yourself from uh, the government control and of course we're in the cryptocurrency space to look after your own money i have a very different view land is being controlled it is a commodity that can't be reproduced it is the best store of value uh, and it's not being there's no more of it being made unless you obviously take Mars as a consideration. We know that's not going to happen for some time. So looking at it now, land is the best store. And that is what peaks us into the cycle. When all of the gains made in stocks, in crypto, businesses, everything you can think of, it all comes back into the land value. And once we really uh, get a whole lot of credit spike those land values and no one's left to buy that's when the market crashes and that is due in around 2026 for the US economy. Australia might be a little earlier but the US could drag us into 2026. So that is a whole lot of news cycles why Bitcoin's crashing. I've added a lot of stuff in there and I will expand on that in future videos and I have talked about it in the years gone by. I started talking about this in around 2017 online, so I'll have the odd video on the channel if you're interested. Otherwise, you can search for the 18.6 year cycle. It has been known for decades, if not a century or more. So check that out. A, lot, a couple of last things I'll leave with are from Kathy Wood, who has bought a ton more Tesla amid Tuesday sell-off. So she already has about a 9% weighting in their portfolio of Tesla. Uh, I don't have the rest of this article here, but essentially you can see they bought about 120 million. That's what we're really worried about and how much is of it is in their portfolio at ARK Invest. So they're buying this dip. Are you buying the dip? Let me know down below. Last thing I wanna leave you with is if you have a, a view of the market that can only be one way, try inverting that view. Now this is something very different. Uh, I, I'm subscribed to Rebel Wisdom. If you are too, let me know down below. Check this little video, it's four minutes, Divided Brain, Divided World, uh, Ian McGilchrist. Essentially, if you have one fixed view of the world, try and flip that view so you invert it and 
see what the what the results are so that we're not fixated on one view that is how we improve as investors as well and you would note that i've done that many times with the chart by inverting the scale if we think it can only go one way invert it and see what your thoughts are of that chart play that game and you will see a world of difference it really opens your eyes up to uh, a lot of difference when it comes to thinking outside the square so check that video out 236 is the point there, but it's a four minute video, it's, it's fantastic. Thank you very much for joining me on a very, I would say, different look at why Bitcoin is crashing and where to from here. I think we are looking for a little bit of a temporary bottom. Potentially, we could go a little lower from here, but I wanna see how this day ends because so far we've seen two days down and we don't wanna see a third day down. A, da a down day is a lower high, a lower low, not just a red candle, but it has to be a lower high and a lower low than the previous day. And so far we've seen two of those and we're getting a nice solid uh, rally from this point. So even if we went lower, I've got targets around 39, 40,000, which is an easy support level from the old high back here. So we'll, touch, we'll go into this in a little more detail in future videos. But for now, I want to wrap that up there. Thank you for your time on this video. Hopefully I've added a little more uh, insight, hopefully some more value and just broaden the thoughts on the typical, here's the news, this is what happens in crypto, this is why. Another way to think outside the square for yourself and start to come up with your own thoughts of the market. If you found value, let me know. Hit that like button down below. Let's get the video to 1500 likes. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell notification icon because it goes a long way to helping out the channel and letting you see this content come out on your uh, subscriber newsfeed on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram. Link is down below if you want to stay up to date and do a QA. and I'm doing daily q and over there as well as showing you my retirement fund portfolio, which has been hit pretty hard over the last couple of days. We're at around 190,000 to 200,000 over there. So go and check it out, Instagram down below. If you wanna trade, I've got links to SwiftX, Binance down below, and of course, crypto.com and BlockFi if you wanna earn interest on your cryptocurrencies, including stable coins, while you wait for the dip to buy back a little more later. I'll wrap it up there, guys. You know where to catch me. Until next time, have more fun to get more done. Peace out.